hello. Your little mischievous fairy's back, and she's jinxing something again. The depiction of women in video games with 10 positive depictions. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. To start, we will briefly discuss characters and why they are often depicted the way they are. Extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. I finally set out to make my mark, to find adventure. But instead, adventure found me. In our darkest moments, when life flashes before us, we find something. Something that keeps us going. Something that pushes us. So, let us begin. It has been suggested that we, as an audience, connect with or care about characters that fit into the following three categories. Characters we feel sorry for. And the rest. Characters who possess humanizing traits. Lords must be stopped. And characters who possess qualities we admire. And I know just the person to help me. Often, characters fit into more than one or all three of the three categories. And this is what we're going to look at in each of the character depictions mentioned in this video. So, let us begin with our first game. Well, what about Shepard? She grew up in the colonies. She knows how tough life can be out there. Mass Effect, one of my favorite games. And the incredible female characters. Let's take a look at Commander Shepard. Now, Bear in mind that yes, the male incantation of Shepard is generally used for the game's promotional materials. A lot of fans believe that the female Shepard is far superior. Jane Shepard is just as capable as her male counterpart, and Bioware should be praised for striving for some semblance of equality. She saves the universe. If that wasn't hard enough as it is, she constantly shows her strength as a character and Bioware should be proud of their creation. It was said by Patrick Nash, putting a character in moral jeopardy generates particularly strong fields of empathy. And in the Mass Effect games, with how you can choose whether you're a paragon or a renegade, does exactly this. Your character is not only placed in moral jeopardy, but you are also. And thus, you grow closer with the character emotionally as you progress in the game. Board is green. Approach run has begun. Not only this, but in the Mass Effect universe, there is an equally as powerful female character. Meet Arya, the Asari de facto ruler of Omega. Stand still. I was told you're the person to talk to if I have questions. They're clean. Depends on the questions. As quoted by her, I am Omega. You run Omega? <laughs> And she has every right to claim to be so. That's as she rules the nominal capital gets. of the Terminus system. I keep at a fiercely distances. possessive character. She will do anything either. to protect Omega we'll and maintain sleep. her dominance. When she first arrived on Omega, she worked as an exotic Mind dancer and worked her way up. And she business. used this as a clever cover in order to eventually kill the owner of the Afterlife Club 
and claim ownership. She continued to form alliances and consolidate power before eventually overthrowing the ruler of Omega. This character is a strong female character, intellectual, observative, authoritative, and always gets the last word. Don't fuck with Arya. However, it has often been argued that the way Arya is first introduced to the player is sexist, due to her being in a strip club that she owns, but those people forget one crucial point that surrounds any narrative. Show, don't tell. Almost everything you need to know about Arya, her intellect and cunning is depicted to the player in that first meeting. She demonstrates that she has eyes and ears everywhere in Omega, and due to her seemingly relaxed state as well as the control depicted, it demonstrates that Arya is a powerful woman, especially considering how her mannerisms fit so brilliantly in the scene, also demonstrating that she owns it and no one owns her. She is a free and very powerful woman. Then there is Lara Croft. Widely seen as the trigger for an increase in female protagonists for games, she is strong, intelligent, and a force to be reckoned with. In the 2013 reboot of the Tomb Raider franchise, the game follows 21-year-old Lara Croft as she searches for lost relics. In our darkest moments, Help! when life flashes before us, <coughs> we find something. At the beginning of the game, she is portrayed just as many other women are now, as a naive and vulnerable girl. But as the game progresses, one witnesses her transformation from a victim of the island to a hardened survivor. It has been argued that Lara Croft has often been highly sexualized. However, people fail to mention her powerful personality and the incredible transformation she made from being a frightened girl to a powerful woman. I made a promise. I've got to find them. Surviving anything that is thrown her way. The victim to hero usage in this game can also be easily explained, as quoted. We feel sorry for victims of injustice or hardship, people who are helpless and defenseless, and who suffer undeserved maltreatment, brutality, misfortune and abuse. This means that originally Lara was a character we felt sorry for, however she soon became a character we admire as she grew to being a survivor of these brutalities and fought back. No one wants to see this survivor throwing pretty little flowers at those that are trying to kill them. So she is pretty damn powerful and pretty damn awesome. You got a craft. I don't think I'm that kind of craft. Sure you are. <sighs> and should be credited for that. But not only this. Her humanizing traits make her easy for the audience to like and connect with, and care about. With every hardship and misfortune she has experienced, the player experiences it with her, and for all of her qualities, her strength and intellect, her survival skills, she deserves a mention as one of the most positive female protagonists depicted in games. Boys, I've got to do this. I don't survive. None of us will. As said by Jacqueline Furby and Claire Hines, fantasy is not the object of desire, but its setting. Which leads me to my next game, Final Fantasy 
13. Starting with the character of Lightning. Be quiet. <laughs> An introduction to a character is crucial because first impressions are important and the initial introduction to Lightning, the player soon comes to realise that her sister matters to her more than life itself. Not only this, but she is depicted as a very cold character to those she has just met. Her original name being Claire Farron, she is the narrator and a temporary playable character in part 2 of Final Fantasy XIII. However, she returned as the protagonist to Lightning Returns. Throughout XIII, Lightning demonstrates her determination as she seeks to save her sister. In Lightning Returns, she is chosen to be the saviour and tasked to save people's souls before the end of the world. Lightning herself is a determined young woman, concentrated and independent. At first she is perceived as cold and standoffish as she distances herself from her companions, but much of her motivation is fueled by her own belief that she failed to protect Sarah, which is often what leads her to lash out. It isn't until she journeys with hope that she shows her compassion and begins to trust others as well as see the errors in her approach. This is all because she took another under her wing. All of these qualities and traits prove her to be a strong female protagonist with a powerful destiny in the games. Time to go. We have to leave before the army. What? That's a Pulse brand. That girl's a Lassie. I already told you that. Pulse Lassie are the enemies of Cocoon. So they should die? Listen, if she fails her focus, you know how that'll end. And killing her is a mercy? You came. Sarah! Let's get you out of here. Hands off. I'm taking her home. Sis, I'm... I'm not your sister. You couldn't protect her. It's your fault she... You can save us. Sarah? You can save us. Or protect us all. Save... Cocoon. Save Cocoon? Sarah? That was your focus? Anything. I'll do anything. Leave it to me. You'll see. I'll protect Cocoon. I'll save everyone. Somehow, I'll make things right. You just relax. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Sarah! However, when it comes to Final Fantasy XIII, we're not done here, because there is another strong female character in the story, her name being Sarah Baron, Lightning's younger sister. A straight A student when she was at school, Sarah is mature, wise and cares deeply for those around her. 
One of her most inspirational traits is how she remains positive and believes in a better future as long as she has her friends by her side. These traits in her never change, despite the grave circumstances that surround her. Despite her being the damsel in distress in part one, she certainly deserves a mention, and that is why she is in this video. In the three years that pass in Final Fantasy XIII, part two, she retains her strong and caring personality, as well as her determination to find lightning. She holds her own in battle, with or without Noel's help, and these are all reasons as to why Sarah should be considered to be one of the most inspirational female protagonists of a game story. Get up, Sarah. You were in my dream. I saw you. Save it for later. Can you fight? Have to? You're gonna have to. One more thing. Don't ever lay down and wait to die. <laughs> Next on my list of strong female protagonists and the depictions of them is Max from Life is Strange. Max immediately shows her strong personality and character by saving her childhood friend, Chloe Price, from being murdered in one of the Academy's bathrooms, and discovers that she can rewind time and even stop it in its tracks. A powerful, selfless character with an incredible ability that no others possess. All of these qualities depicted in the first true introduction of Max are all qualities to admire. Max must also discover a way to use her powers in order to save the town from a tornado. I mean, come on, how hard is that? But if saving the town from a tornado isn't enough, she is geeky, introverted, and slightly self-conscious, especially when it comes to her photography, which she is passionate about. She likes to observe the world around her rather than participate in it. This is why people think that she doesn't really care for others, even though this is proven not to be the case after what occurs in the Blackwell Academy's bathroom. These qualities begin creating contrast in the character of Max, turning her from a 2D to a 3D character, bringing her to life. Then something happened. Something that changed my life forever. Max, what's going on? Where am I? There's something else I have to tell you. Holy shit. Talk to me, Max. Oh, no! I discovered I could reverse time. Max, start from the beginning. Hey! Max? Chloe? Oh! Yay, Max! In the bathroom today, you set off the alarm. As said by Carl, a powerful way to reveal character is through contrast, which means comparing two things to show a difference. And with Max, the contrast is simple. She is an introvert who would rather remain on the outside, observing the world rather than being a part of it. And yet, she is the hero of this story. The introverted, self-conscious character saves her best friend from being murdered and searches for a way to save her home from a tornado. The two contrasts create a wonderful, incredible female protagonist. But not only this, she's also a clear deductive thinker, smart and sneaky, but also practical, reasonable and mature for her age. She is so brave placing herself in harm's way to protect those she cares about. And that is why she gets a mention in this video. As she is a powerful character with extraordinary personality traits and abilities.
Next comes Commander Catherine B320. A woman described as an inspired tactician and a brilliant hacker. Allegedly, there hasn't been a system yet that she has been unable to crack. A very different personality and character to those previously mentioned in this video. She also has a habit of occasionally conducting her own investigations into classified intel, more than would be appreciated by her superiors. Her intellect certainly is a quality to admire. As said by Carl, there are two ways you can reveal character through others. How they talk with other characters or how they're affected by him or her through casual and meaningful relationships. Which leads me to my next point. Her impeccable ability to acquire and digest information has been described as supernatural. Bit creepy. This is how her co-workers gossip about her, bringing her character to life and using another character to reveal information often works better than having the characters say it themselves. As said by Robert McKee, the singular assemblage of traits is characterization, but it is not character. All observable traits in a character are their characterization, but even though they are observable, they can remain 2D in their personalities. Cat is certainly not the case. She is a female Spartan, and this is part of her characterization as it is observable and known to the audience. However, Kat dies alongside her fellow soldiers in the fall of Reach at the very end of the game. Throughout it, and as demonstrated in the trailers, she goes out fighting. Come on, come on, get in! Let's go, come on! Close the doors! Faster! In the trailer, Deliver Hope, she is seen running with a bomb with the sole purpose to get it on the alien ship to detonate and kill god knows how many and never once does she appear to lose her determination to complete her mission. This is one of the many things that brings her character to life. She is a strong, powerful and determined woman and for that alone, Kat definitely deserves a place in this video. The Walking Dead's very own Clementine. As said by Claudia Hunter Johnson, the decisions our characters make, like our own, are hotlines to who they are and what they value and believe. This directly ties with Clementine in The Walking Dead, as each decision the player makes has a consequence, whilst it also demonstrates Clem's values and beliefs. And despite the decision the player chooses, it is clear that Clementine has certain values programmed into her beautiful character. Despite her being an 11 year old girl, 
Clem definitely deserves to be mentioned for the remarkable intellect and maturity she demonstrates in the games. She is practical and can improvise in situations with ease. And she can pick up on subtle things most children her age wouldn't be bothered by. Other than being a fast, practical thinker, she is also very kind-hearted and polite, demonstrating adequate manners when talking to her elders. Though this doesn't stop her from speaking her mind, she demonstrates in the game that she believes that everyone should do their best to be a good Samaritan, unless threatened otherwise. However, despite her maturity, she is still relatively innocent demonstrating in numerous ways and in many episodes which ensures the player remains aware of the fact that she is still a child. Hello there. I'm out looking for my people. Seven of them to be exact. Maybe you've seen them. Losing Lee, her father figure, the man that had protected her pretty much since the beginning was a crucial focus point on her development as a character and to her storyline, making it so that she grows to become a powerful young woman. And more importantly, she becomes the survivor she was destined to be. Why would Carver still be following us? What's the most important thing in this world? What's the one thing a guy would walk hundreds of miles to get me? You have no idea who these people are, do you? If people don't trust you, how can you trust them? Everyone I grew up with, it all happened to them. Now, it's gonna happen to us. Can't shoot them. Too much noise. There are only two. Let's take them. Oracle. Though she isn't a playable character, nor is she really seen in the games, Oracle certainly deserves a place as a positive depiction of women in games. Originally, Oracle was Batgirl, until she had a back broken and failed to recover. So instead of giving up, like many people do when they lose their mobility, she reinvented herself. Now I know feminists like to complain about this because Batman broke his back ages ago and fully recovered it into being Batman again. But I want you to bear with me because I do have some points here. She became an informant to Batman, able to help him from afar and thus she should always be admired for her inner strength. Oracle has an eidetic memory, meaning she can recall everything she sees and reads. She also has high-level hacking and computer skills. Oracle should be an inspiration to all disabled people, as she never gives up, despite being paralyzed from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair. She assists the Dark Knight with her computer expertise and provides him with a constant stream of information in the field to aid his battle. As said before, we like and care about characters we feel sorry for, but we also like and care for characters that we admire. And Oracle is certainly a character to admire. She is a true inspiration and should never be discounted. Now we will look at Dragon Age Inquisition. Much like we looked at the Mass Effect games, the powerful female counterpart to the male is much like in Mass Effect allowing the player to choose the life the Inquisitor will lead and being equal to the male counter. Death and death 
However, there are two characters from Dragon Age Inquisition that I would like to bring attention to. Starting with Liliana, a Norwegian bard who left her home to venture to the village of Lothering in order to become a sister of the Chantry. The gamer first meets her in Origins, where she becomes a possible companion and romance option to the Warden of either gender. But in the DLC to Dragon Age Origins, Liliana's song, she is not a mere companion anymore as she becomes her own playable character and protagonist to the DLC. It is within the DLC that the player learns more about this young sister of the Chantry as she is revealed to be a strong independent woman who once lived a crime-filled life. Not something you would expect from a sister of the Chantry, but there you go. You need to do better than safe. You need to end this. Do you have weapons? Good. The Magister's probably in his chambers. A master at manipulation, sabotage and combat. Her character develops over the Dragon Age games, as she grows to become more and more powerful. In the Inquisition game, she serves as the Inquisition's spy master, an advisor to the Inquisitor as well, as a trusted friend and ally. It is optional for the player to either make either her or Cassandra the next Divine. If it weren't for her intellect, resourcefulness and strength, this wouldn't even be a consideration for her as a character. Liliana should always be mentioned when discussing the positive depictions of women in games. The second character to mention from Dragon Age is Morrigan. Are you a vulture, I wonder? A scavenger poking amidst a corpse whose bones were long since cleaned? Or merely an intruder? Come into these dark spawn filled wilds of mine in search of easy prey. What say you? Hmm? Scavenger or intruder? A witch of the wilds. She is one of the innumerable sorceresses whose legends originate in the Kakari wilds. And as a young woman, she is called upon to leave her home in order to help the Warden in the Fifth Blight. Distrusting of humankind, Morgan is close to nature and the animals of the Kakari Wilds. When she reached a sufficient age, she would occasionally assist her mother, Flemeth, who, without question, is one of the most powerful characters in the game, never mind women in the game, in eliminating threats to them. This meant that if Templars hunted the pair, Morrigan would play the part of the innocent girl in fear for her life, while in reality, she'd be leading the men to Flemeth, and ultimately, their doom. This, in itself, just shows her cunning and manipulative abilities, whilst also demonstrating her strength as a character and her experience as a mage in a world where mages are discriminated against on a daily basis. A shapeshifter. Master manipulator, incredible mage, powerful and strong. Morgan uses each and every one of her personality traits, her strengths and her weaknesses, to work her way from the bottom in the Kakari Wilds to the very top. She is one powerful and intellectual woman that you wouldn't want to cross. To you, it shall make no difference. Next up is Evie Fry from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now I know that the games have been going downhill recently with games such as Assassin's Creed Unity, which wasn't really good in my own opinion, but I think that Evie deserves to be mentioned as a positive depiction of women in games. A true tactician and firm believer in the teachings of the Brotherhood. 
taught to her and her twin brother by their father. Evie is an intellectual woman who carefully and patiently plans each of her missions as she considers every angle to ensure the best chance of success. Will not fail. With every thrust of my blade, I'll cut through their control. And together, we'll take back London. Young Evie took to the lessons of her father in a way that her brother, Jacob, didn't, and became more studious and more interested in the law and history of the assassins. By contrast, Jacob is the complete opposite to her, as her planning can sometimes work against her by slowing her down, her brother is one to spring into action, though his plans lack sufficient forethought as a result. Though the twins are most effective when they work together, because they balance each other out, Evie is more so the brains behind the two. She is intellectual, strategic, brave and efficient, and demonstrates each of these qualities throughout the game. She is a master assassin of the British Brotherhood active in London during the Victorian era and a member of the Order of the Sacred Garter. Evie and Jacob originally left their home and went to London to overthrow the oppressive Templar-led establishment, whilst also helping the poverty-stricken masses after the death of their father. To accomplish their mission to help these people, they founded a criminal syndicate that opposed the Templar-backed blighters. Clearly a strong and very much independent woman, Evie demonstrates in her character that she is one to admire and aspire to be like. The contrast to her character is external and that being her polar opposite brother. As said by Carl, contrasting a character with another distinguishes and reveals their personalities. It can also spice up a storyline when other elements are contrasted such as different ambitions, motivations, backgrounds, goals, attitudes, and values. It is clear that the contrast between Evie and Jacob are not their motivations or backgrounds, but their personalities and how different they are. They are, in effect, each other's counterpart. To be the equal counterpart to Jacob in the Victorian era is also something that should be considered, as in those days, Women were seen as vulnerable and delicate. What was that explosion? <laughs> what explosion? Evie. This next female character speaks for herself just by watching the playthroughs or playing through the game yourself. Though she is a secondary playable character in The Last of Us and protagonist of American Dreams and Left Behind, it can't be forgotten that she is only 14 and is surviving some of the harshest of environments much like Clementine in The Walking Dead. She also demonstrates a maturity far beyond her years. But not only this, she is also immune to the fungal pandemic. Well, then I'm staying. Ellie, we won't get another shot at this. Hey, we're smuggling her? There's a crew of fireflies that'll meet you at the Capitol building. Ellie was born several years after the apocalypse began. And as a result, she grew up in an oppressive okay? military quarantine zone in Boston with little to no knowledge of the world beforehand though the apocalyptic world is all she has ever known it doesn't stop it from frightening her and this humanizes her when she arrives at the Boston quarantine zone she witnesses a military scanning a man for her infection and at first thinks nothing of it until the scan reads positive and the man is forced to his knees at gunpoint Despite the fungal pandemic being all she has ever known, it doesn't stop it from frightening her. And it, it doesn't stop her from being a caring character who at one point does everything in her power to save Noel. But as I said before, the character of Ellie speaks for herself. They're coming. I know. Get it, let's go. Go. So 
something on your shoe. <sighs> Gross. As It Was Said by Robert McKay. Characterization is the sum of all observable qualities of a human being. Everything knowable through careful scrutiny. Age and IQ. Sex and sexuality. Style of speech and gesture. Choices of home, car and dress. Education and occupation. Personality and nervosity. Values and attitudes. All aspects of humanity we could know by taking notes on someone day in and day out. The truth is, there are hundreds of games I could have chosen for this video, and limiting it to 10 was highly difficult for me. The women in these games demonstrated their own unique personalities, strengths and weaknesses, and so I chose to give each of them a mention. Often in games, women aren't sexualized, but instead made to be outstanding characters that are above and beyond the rest of their generation. If you enjoyed this video, please press like and subscribe. If you have any ideas of other positive depictions of women in games, feel free to mention them in the comments section below. And I hope you'll join me in my next video, where I'll be jinxing something else.